So in this video we're going to have a think about the uh, Green Revolution. So you need to be quite specific about what the Green Revolution actually is. So um, in the 1960s, starting in the 1950s, but in the 1960s, um, there was acknowledgement by the United States and other Western allies uh, that the, the world had a food problem and there was simply not the world was simply not producing enough food for its growing population. We've already seen, starting the in the 1950s, how important science was and the application of science. And the position that West, much of Western society was in at that time was it's almost seen that uh, nature was the enemy, nature was causing the problem, and it was science, it was boundless science, unlimited science, technology that could pretty much solve any problem or shortcoming that was pre pre presented by the natural environment. So through selective breeding and the increased use of uh, chemicals, a very technological approach was taken to improving yields of crops. Principally the crops they focused on were wheat and rice. Uh, they are good sources of, car uh, of carbohydrates. So there, through selective breeding, um, special varieties of wheat and rice were created. Um, this wheat and rice was much more productive, uh, had higher nutritional content of the, uh, of the grain, and were able to deal with a wider range of challenge in challenging environments. So this gives us, um, gets us to um, move on uh, to think about the uh, technocentric approach uh, towards how we view the environment. So we'll be going on to thinking about um, something called environmental value systems. Possibly the easiest one to think about is the way you look at the environment is in a very technological way layers and layers of scientific information, uh, uh, innovation, application and development of new technology to manage the natural environment for the benefit of uh, human beings. So really the first time we saw this at any large scale uh, was um, with the uh, Green Revolution. Now we have to be fair about this, the Green Revolution did have a huge impact on millions of people's lives around the world, it did improve their access to food, but as we, going on to, uh, as we will go on to see, and as you remember for example with DDT, that technocentric approach, while having huge benefits, can also present a range of challenges and problems. And what we're increasingly starting to find is that you get layers of technology and layers of technology. So you get one layer of technology that solves a problem, but it can create another problem. Then the response is another layer of technology to save that problem. Then that new layer of technology creates another problem. So there's kind of this treadmill, this constantly developing technology over and over and over again. Um, what ecologists would and environmentalists would be concerned about is this constant application of technology can only go on so far. You can only start push the environment, the natural environment so far. It is not infinite, it is finite. And this technology, technology, technology will push nature too far and then things start to go really wrong. So here, um, we focused on the technocentric view. There we go. I'll highlight the word technocentric view uh, for you there. And the other end of the spectrum is ecocentric. And ecocentric in the environmental value system, as we see, is much more about working with nature and within the limits of nature. So you have those two conflicting views of how humans should manage the environment. The technocentric view, which we talked about briefly here, at the other end of the spectrum, the ecocentric view. So take your time to read the text on the website and watch the video to try to understand what the Green Revolution is and the concept of a technocentric approach to environmentalism.